Hi guys, I'm Erin. I am a homeschooling mom of four kids and we just wrapped up our fifth year of homeschooling. So I thought I'd do a little video for you about what we use for our language arts curriculum this year and share with you a little bit about what we liked about it and what we didn't like. This year we used the good and the beautiful for our language arts. We use level one with our second grader and level three with our fourth grader. I want to just start out by saying everything here is our opinion. It relates to us as a family and things that we personally liked and didn't like about it. And every family is gonna be different and have different ideas. I'm just sharing an honest opinion about what we liked and what we didn't like about this curriculum. And I hope that by hearing that from someone, it will be helpful to you in making a decision whether or not this is gonna be a good fit for your family. One thing I do wanna to mention too is that it's set up by levels instead of by grade. And so the grade level that your child is in might not correlate to the level that you would choose for your language arts program. So if you go to the website, I'll link it below for you. They have course assessments that you can take to see where your child might place. And so I personally found, at least for my kids and my experience, like one level higher than what their grade level is. And so that's why we chose for our fourth grader, we did the level three and for our second grader, we did the level one. And I felt like that was more on par with what their skill level was and also with what like our state testing involves. The big draw for me when I started it was that it covered phonics and reading and grammar and usage and punctuation and spelling and writing and literature and it even has art appreciation. I felt like I wasn't gonna miss anything and uh, I loved that it also is just kind of an open and go curriculum. There wasn't any prep time. That for me was a huge benefit of it because it's such a time saver in that regard. I don't have time to gather all these worksheets and different things from all different kinds of places. I've got four kids. <laughs> I don't have time for that. With the level one, we love that it started out really basic. It has you start learning what some sentences are, and it has a lot of short stories, which are just littler ones for the kids to read through with you together um, to practice the sounds. So it's working on some of those phonics things, working with soft C and soft G. Um, it, has, it has artwork also. It has these assessments that you do Here's the silent E practice chart. So you set a timer for 90 seconds and have the kids read through however many words that they can get through correctly. And you write down, so you can see my son started with only 15 words correctly in September of last year. And by the end of the school year, he got to 49 words in 90 seconds. So even though he was technically second grade and doing a level one course book, I am more concerned with his progress. I felt like that was really valuable for us. You can see that this is really comprehensive. So that is a look at the course one level three course book. It starts out, you can see already it's got some beautiful artwork in it and it has these lessons laid out for you and you just work through the page. It has the boxes to check off as you go through. It has spelling rules. It's got things where you can highlight parts and copy things. It has some geography involved. It starts going through all the grammar things that you need to know and parts of speech and how to do open syllables and multi-syllable words. Here's one where it uh, has a story that you're supposed to read through and it tells you how many errors there are in it. Here it has compound subjects, compound verbs, independent clauses, has a lot of sentence diagramming, subordinating con conjunctions, coordinating conjunctions, has you do some sample letter writing, and that's it for the level three. All the levels one through level five, you can get the downloaded PDF of the entire curriculum for free. You can download it, you can take it to the library and print the entire curriculum out for free at the library and then just throw it in a free binder if you wanted to do that. Um, we personally chose to order 
the course books because I like having them spiral bound together. We've done things with loose pages and I just felt like pages ended up everywhere and I was kind of over <laughs> the loose pages all over the place. All of the course books online are around $30. That's a very affordable and reasonable price I feel like for a full year's in-depth great curriculum. The Good and the Beautiful also has some readers that you can purchase to go along with for your kids to read through for their silent reading time. And they have a set of flashcards that have either vocabulary words or for the younger levels they have like phonics type flashcards to learn the different letter sounds and those types of things um, and so you can get those things to go along with the curriculum but you do not have to use them if you don't want to as far as this curriculum in general I wouldn't say that I loved everything about it I liked it so by that, I mean there were a lot of good things that I did really enjoy about it, but there were a couple of things that um, weren't maybe as high on my enjoyment factor. <laughs> maybe not mine so much, but for my kids, it was not the best fit for them personally. They found the readers kind of like... <sighs> They were a little bored. My second grader today said that it was all girl stuff. It was butterflies and rainbows and puppy dogs. And I mean, everything was wholesome and genuine and good teaching good moral lessons and all of those things. So that was great. But my kids got really bored with the curriculum and the readers that went along with it. So we ended up just tossing the readers. We didn't do those. We chose our own silent reading books and we even stopped doing the flashcards and stuff partly through the year because that just wasn't really the way that we learn and the way that I like to teach my kids. Again, that being said, my kids just in particular are not worksheet lovers. Like at all so they hate anything that's in a worksheet so they didn't enjoy this in part because that was just the format of what it is so if your kids love worksheets then they might absolutely love this curriculum it is pretty teacher intensive not in prep work but in the day-to-day -day having to sit through the entire lesson with each child one at a time for me having four kids and one of them being a two-year-old that needs a whole lot of attention it was kind of a challenge to find an hour and a half where i could have undivided one-on-one -on -one time with my three other kids to get through their language arts curriculum. I personally kind of err on the side of doing things that either are a little bit more independent that don't require my working through every single word on the page or things that um, are a little bit more gentle in approach. I felt like this curriculum was a little bit overwhelming with some of the information that it was teaching. I feel like it's a little bit maybe more than I personally feel like my kids need to know at this level. I'm glad that we chose it for this year and that we continued throughout the year to just get through it. But it kind of got to that point where we were just doing it to get through it. And for me, that's that's not great. We want to raise lifelong learners. We want to raise kids that are enjoying learning, that they're having fun doing it because then they're going to want to continue to do it. And so we are going to choose to do something different for next year that I feel like might be a better fit and a little bit more interesting and more engaging with my kids. All that being said, I do still highly recommend this curriculum. I feel like it's a great fit for a lot of people. There are a lot of really great things about it and I know a lot of families families that do absolutely love it. This is just my honest opinion about how this worked for our family and for my kids in particular. Your kids might be over the moon for all the worksheets and the coloring and the artwork and all of those things. Also, as part of our language arts, we went with The Good and the Beautiful for handwriting. Even though they didn't particularly love the language arts curriculum, all three of them really, really enjoyed the handwriting program. So we're gonna continue with The Good and the Beautiful for our handwriting for next year. One of the things that we loved about the handwriting was that 
each day the lesson was only one page. I think is why they really liked it too, is that a lot of the pages, if you see they've got like copying the letters and then they'll have a fun picture to color. One of these they'll have the letters and then they'll say, draw this picture. And so you can see my son drew this, but then he expanded on it and drew some more. The level three one starts out with everything is all print and then um, it works your way into, again, where you're copying some sentences, some words, and then it's got draw a picture of something. By the end, it started having tracing some cursive words in level three. And so this was the one my second grader did, and this was his very first experience doing anything cursive. So he was pretty excited about that. The level four, we chose that one for our fourth grader because he hadn't done any cursive up to this point and we wanted to do something that was going to introduce him to it, but in a gentle and easy way that wasn't just kind of over the top. So even for him, it started out just kind of writing letters and copying them down. Um, I do like too that it has you have do assessments with your kids with their handwriting. So it has the letter and has you copy it multiple times. And then as the parent, you go through and see which ones still need the most work and you write them at the top of the page. And then the next day they'll go through and work on those letters again, just kind of practicing those ones that they needed a little bit more work on. And then here just shows you a little bit of how the cursive alphabet is starting to be introduced. Again, it's not like so much that the kids get overwhelmed in a single day. This is one day's lesson. And then they got to color a fun page. Um, and so I loved that the lessons were gentle and then they were easy, but they were still learning things. I would definitely recommend The Good and the Beautiful for their handwriting program. We really enjoyed all of the levels that we chose and next year we're gonna just bump our kids up one level from where they were at and we're gonna continue with the handwriting. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up below if you did and make sure you subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you know when I post a new video. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.